There is no way that Earth is the only place out of the entire universe to contain life. And mark my words, in our lifetimes, we will confirm that not only does life live outside of planet Earth, but we can find it right here in our very own solar system. And if you think that sounds unlikely, just wait until you hear the details that I'm about to share with you in this video. But let me start off by sharing some of the unbelievable places that we've recently discovered contains life to the utter surprise and amazement of scientists. Take, for example, radiation-eating bacteria that they've discovered living inside of nuclear reactors to the complete shock of scientists that not only did the radiation not kill the bacteria, but the bacteria was thriving off of eating nuclear waste, something they never thought possible. Another great example is the abundance of life that they've discovered living inside and on top of hydrothermal vents deep underneath the ocean. Superheated, toxic environments once thought to be completely inhospitable to life, we've since learned that many species make it their home, whether it be various types of tube worms, limpets, scale worms, different types of bacteria, snails, sea spiders, even different types of fish and octopus make this inhospitable environment their home. Another interesting example is when they found living microbes living more than a half mile underneath the Antarctic ice sheet. After being without sun or air for millions of years, and these little organisms were thriving. But a far more amazing example is when they found living bacteria on the outside of the International Space Station. And of course, this created a lot of debate on whether the bacteria came from humans back here on Earth and the bacteria survived once it got to space, or whether the bacteria had came from outer space entirely. And it seems to be determined that it came from humans, but the interesting part is the fact that for more than three years, this bacteria had survived the vacuum of space. I mean, something that could survive a 500 degree Fahrenheit temperature swing between the difference of sunlight and shade. So of course they decided to do further experiments and they decided to send up what are known as tardigrades, which are eight-legged invertebrates, microscopic, but they're considered to be the indestructible life form, which will be the last living thing on earth when the earth eventually dies and the sun goes out. Because these are known to live in extreme environments, withstanding radiation, and in fact, they can go without food or water for more than 30 years, and can also survive, like I said, several hundred degree temperature swings. And they also, too, lived outside in the vacuum of space without an issue. I mean, how incredible is that? The point of these examples is to show us that places that we didn't think that life could survive actually can, and this is just the beginning of what we thought we knew. And this reminds me of a quote from Jurassic Park, I'm sure you remember it. Life finds a way. So this brings me to the emphasis of this video, which is the fact that there are five moons inside of our solar system that have an incredible likelihood for having some sort of life on it. And these five moons are found orbiting around Jupiter and Saturn. So let me start off with the moons around Jupiter and go with Europa which has been documented of having these massive water plumes going out of it, out of this icy planet, so it confirms that there's some sort of geothermal activity, just like we have on Earth. There is a heat source inside of this moon. And there is a liquid ocean with, get this, more than twice the volume of all Earth's oceans combined. So this, of course, reminds me of the examples that I just used with hydrothermal vents, as well as Antarctica microbes, that who knows what could be living underneath the ice sheets. I mean, if there's heat there, the question becomes, well, how warm are these oceans and what could be living inside of them? Now, the two other moons of Jupiter that could potentially have life is Ganymede and Callisto, which are believed to have undersurface oceans underneath the rock, potentially more than 60 miles or 100 kilometers deep underneath the surface is where these bodies of water are believed to be. And this, of course, reminds me of a discovery how they found a massive ocean inside of the Earth's mantle, more than a third of the way to the core itself. And real quick, take a look here, press pause so you can see this real quick. These are the five moons that I'm discussing here, and you can see the size comparison. But Ganymede is the largest moon in the entire solar system, and in fact, it's the ninth largest object in the entire solar system, including the sun. But when you look at pictures of it, you can't help but think that like, wow, is there something living there on the surface? But what we do know about it is that it has a salty ocean with more water than planet Earth. Just think about that. But where it gets even crazier is that scientists think that this ocean is 60 miles or 100 kilometers thick, more than 10 times the depth of the Earth's oceans. But the very fact that it's a saltwater ocean makes you wonder what could possibly be living there. I mean, 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in our saltwater ocean, and we've explored less than 5% of that. So we cannot presume to know 
what's going on in the ocean underneath the surface of some moon a billion miles away. Now let me transition to the moons of Saturn and start off by talking about Titan. Titan also has an atmosphere and from the pictures itself it does look hospitable but you need to know that it's very cold. In fact, negative 292 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 180 degrees Celsius. But that temperature is not far off from the survivability of bacteria on the outside of the International Space Station at negative 238 degrees Fahrenheit. So it makes you wonder. Also take a look at these surface photos as they had a lander go on it. And these are basically the only photos of it that exist. Very few, they're not very good as you can tell. But what's so interesting is that there are methane lakes confirmed to be on the surface of Titan. And methane on planet Earth only comes from living organisms, which is the reason why so many scientists speculate the possibility of life on Titan. But this makes me wonder what the possibilities are. I mean, we all remember the Gulf oil spill from several years ago, and then how they discovered that this bacteria was eating and thriving off the oil spill and basically cleaned most of it up all by itself, and it completely shocked scientists. So who knows what could possibly be going on on the moon Titan? Now the last moon I'm discussing is Enceladus, which is, has a liquid ocean frozen beneath the surface and also has the geysers and water plumes. In fact, more than 100 geysers have been documented, so it confirms that there's some sort of geothermal activity on this moon. So the question again becomes, how warm is the ocean underneath? And from various data that they've obtained, this moon has nearly all of the ingredients to support life. And the only way to confirm the rest of it is to go down and land on this moon and discover what's there. So again, when we remind ourselves of how tardigrades can survive in radiation, the vacuum of space and several hundred degree temperature swings, or the various different forms of life that are living in hydrothermal vents, or bacteria living in uh, nuclear reactors and, uh, and underneath the Antarctica ice sheets, we really have to remind ourselves that we just don't know everything about life. And going back to that Jurassic Park quote, life finds a way. And this reminds me of a study conducted by NASA where they determined that Venus was very likely to have been habitable for 2 billion years at one point in the distant past. So there are at least five chances that there is life living on moons in our solar system. Not just one or two possibilities, but five. Think about the incredible odds of that and the fact that there's geothermal vents there. There's obviously a few ingredients that are absolutely necessary for life, hydrogen, carbon, but we already know that some of these things already exist on the moon, and we already know in these incredible, miraculous places where life is li uh, can live in outer space and here on Earth, we have to start asking new questions. And although I'm not saying that there's some conspiracy to keep this knowledge from the masses, because there's not, but most mainstream news networks don't even report on these stories. You have to go to science websites to actually learn about them and seek it out yourself, which makes me wonder how much of this these specifics about these moons are being taught to kids in school today. Can anyone leave a comment and answer that question? Because it's very important that the new generation of open-minded people are knowing that there's a possibility that in their lifetime, we are going to discover alien life in our very own solar system, which will be a shock to many people. So for us to progress faster than we have been by this establishment that has kept us from going back to the moon, I mean, we haven't even been to Mars yet. I remember distinctly being in the seventh grade and there was articles in the, in the newspaper, and I remember our teacher sharing it with us, how NASA said that, yeah, we'll probably be in Mars, landing on Mars with people by 2016. And that was back in 1996, 1997. Here we are, 2018, and we, we're years away from going there, right? So that's why it's so important that more people become aware of this information, because that's what it's going to take, is a new generation of people that are wanting to make change and look into things themselves, that are not willing to accept the status quo of what we've been enduring for the last several decades, having not been back to the moon in 40 freaking years, right? But I'll wrap it up there. I have many other videos to come on a bunch of different topics. I have some really good videos planned in the near term uh, future. So I'll leave it at that. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on this topic, but I'll leave it at that. Bye now.